Everyone is asking what happened and who to believe in the Jamal Williams situation. I'm going to break that down, but there's something much bigger than the Jamal Williams contract happening in Allen Park right now, and I'm here to tell you about it. Let's do this. All right, let me break this down. It's a lesson in negotiation for Jamal, for his agent, and it's being taught by Brad Holmes, and the world has a lot to learn here. Um, pretend you, I'm going to share this with you through an allegory, so don't worry about minimum wage. Just listen to the, you know, the numbers don't matter. It just gives you kind of scale for what we're doing here, okay? Pretend you've been convinced that you're worth $9 an hour. Okay, you did some great things in your last job. You've got somebody telling you're, you, you got to go for nine. You, you, you might wind up at eight or seven fifty, but you are you, you can do this. Let's go in for nine. Let's go in hard. This is your last chance to get any money. We're going to get you what you need. And you're worth that nine. Let's go for it. So in your head, that's your belief, right? So you go in, you apply for a job, you get the offer. The offer is for five dollars and fifty cents an hour. You know, you're worth more than that. You've been told that you're going to consider the offer because it's, it's the offer on the table and you know that's a good company and all those kinds of things. But someone else tells the company, there's no way you're going to settle for that. While that's going on, someone else more talented shows up and says, you know, I'll do the job for $6 an hour. Would this potential employer wait for you or will they take the better talent for a little bit more? If you break down the, the production by the, you know, per dollar an hour or however you want to look at it, the $6 an hour person's worth you know, more value to you. Why would you wait? You're, you know, you sit here then as you watch that other person get hired, you believe you're not, you're not, not eight or nine dollar an hour guy or, you know, you're somewhere around there, but now no one else is offering anything more than nothing, more than $4 an hour. I mean, you got to earn a living, but in your mind, you're being told you're in this situation because that original employer didn't offer you enough. Of course you're bitter, but the reality is, is your friend screwed you. You took the bad advice from the wrong person. And the reality is Brad Holmes just changed the negotiation conversation in Detroit. Agents are on notice. The rest of the NFL is on notice. And that's what I want to talk about in this video, not just that contract. Before I get into it, I want to remind you, please like and subscribe. You know all the algorithm stuff that people talk about. Everyone asks you to do that. But look, we're a small group of people. We gather and, and share as much information about the Detroit Lions as we can. And maybe provide you some context in a way you can use it in your own life. We can learn a lot from sports about leadership and all kinds of other things. And that's part of what we like to provide. Um, those likes, those subscriptions help other people find us and help them be exposed to our work. And uh, it's, it's, it, it helps out a lot. So thanks to everybody who's already done that, the like and the subscribe. We appreciate those things. You are the folks that keep our channel running. You're the heart and soul of what we do. So the conversation in Detroit is changing and I think it's for the better. If you're thinking in small ball terms and from contract to contract, you don't even know that the world has shifted beneath your feet. Just like you didn't know that the leadership style had completely shifted when Sheila and Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell showed up. That's 300 word blog level thinking. If you're a Detroit Lions podcast listener or you're somebody in that realm of thinking, you think a little bit more broadly and you think of it more from a leadership perspective and assistance perspective. And you realize that Brad Holmes has changed the conversation, not just with Jamal, but with players, agents and the NFL at large. And here's what most people haven't figured out yet. Brad Holmes took control of these negotiations and he changed how they occur now and in the future. I want to look back to John Kaminsky. OK, same negotiation tra tactic. And I don't even actually want to call it a tactic. It's a strategy. It's a process, whatever you want. To, it's not a tactic. It was employed, though. The Lions employed that. Brad Holmes employed that same thing. Here's the deal. Here's how much we're willing to pay. If you want to go somewhere else and find more money, you can do that. We're OK with that. That's great. But this is the, this is what our budget is. And, and Kaminsky thought about it. This is how, you know, I don't know. Do I move? What's the people around me? My network of things. It's how much money my agent's going to get. What's, you know, the whole cost benefit analysis there. And he was happy to stay. He loves where he works. He loves the people he works for. There's something to be said for that. He signed. It was easy peasy. No problem. They gave the deal and that's it. Okay. Jamal didn't work that way. He made the mistake of believing somebody who told him that they were a good negotiator on his behalf. They, they wanted to wait till the game was on and didn't realize that a different game was being played. And they were, they were not even in the, the same ballpark, but a completely wrong sport when it came to this. OK, Holmes took the non-negotiation from Jamal 
and the ticking clock and he made a deal instead, basically what I described earlier. But doing so, he reset the table for negotiating with the Detroit Lions and everything from this point forward he owns. Now, that's a key point. Brad Holmes owns this. And we'll see what it, how it pans out. So far, I think it's it's been it's it's good. Uh, we've lost Jamal here, but I it's not through, you know, Jamal's fault. We talked about that, but but Brad Holmes owns this. It's his stamp that's on this, okay? The way you can look at this, there's basically a budget for production in Detroit. If you're not in the budget for what you produce, you're free to sign elsewhere. If you want something outside of the budget, you're done. It's a lot like, and I've talked about this percentage of salary cap for a position. We've talked about it mostly on the podcast with uh, the quarterback position, but it's true across the, the team. They're building a team and they know they have a fixed amount of money they can use. It's a salary cap. So what's the percentage of the cap? And what's that look like going forward? And that's how we're going to budget out based on the importance of these positions on the field to the team. These things all come into a plan. It takes the emotion out of the negotiation. It takes the emotion out of the plan. And it allows you to make very thoughtful, considered decisions based on data. Okay. So with that budget, Holmes now set the negotiating table such that he has some options. He could be a bully and underpay. And, and 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 say his budget is lower for that person and start punching people around and creating a situation. But that's kind of Matt Patricia thinking. That's Brad Holmes, Brad, not Brad Holmes, Bob Quinn thinking, right? Brad Holmes doesn't, doesn't show that way. The leadership team doesn't show that way. That's not what has built this team and this, this camaraderie and this devotion amongst the players that's there today, right? So I think the other option, and this is the much, much more likely option and the one that I, be I believe is in play right now, Brad Holmes could be fair. He could be authentic and he could be a servant leader. We told you how important that authenticity is to leadership since day one. We saw the opposite with Matt Patricia here and basically everywhere he's been since that authenticity, inauthenticity doesn't work. It just doesn't fly, especially with uh, the you know, NFL players today. They want somebody they can trust and they can believe in. They don't want to play the game, right? So if you are fair and you are authentic, then you now have built trust, you build camaraderie and satisfaction in the team. That's the players you have signed. And that also then extends to the negotiating table when you're signing people. Look, we're not here to hurt you. We're not here to, to, to do anything negative to you. We just have our system. And look, linebackers aren't going to be as valuable in our defense, for example. So the percentage of salary cap that we're willing to pay for that position is lower. Uh, we're going to pay more for a quarterback. Everybody is, right? But you start putting boundaries upon what you're willing to do and you take the emotion out of it and it becomes very much a data-based authentic conversation. And that's it. Again, trust, camaraderie, satisfaction on a team. And right now, after watching this play out for two years and from what they inherited from the last regime, it's beginning to really pay dividends. You have a team that almost made the playoffs. And I think a lot of people realize that had the Detroit Lions made the playoffs this year, they had a real shot at winning a game. This is something that really looks to be paying off for the Lions. Brad Holmes is now in the driver's seat. He owns this. He owns how things work. He owns this plan. And if I look back over the history of the Detroit Lions, I haven't seen something like this before. And if I had to put money on it, my bet's on Holmes. <laughs>